Hey everyone, today we're going to do something a little different. Um, I'm sure you're probably tired of seeing all the 12 volt battery kits we've come out with. And to truth be honest, I'm getting a little wore out too. At this point, I think we've pretty much done everything we are going to be able to do with some 12 volt systems. We do have a surprise coming eventually for those, but for now, we want to start talking about some of the advances we want to start doing with the V4, okay? So for our very first 24 volt kit, we're going to be focusing on some of the EVE LF105 batteries and basically setting up a battery system that works with this. Now, we currently don't have our own BMS ready. It's going to be ready soon. But in the meantime, we will be offering this kit and the BMS of choice is going to be the JK200 amp 8, 4 to 8 S BMS. Now, even though this is a 200 amp rated BMS, we'll normally recommend you keep it under 150, preferably in the 120 range. So for this kit, that's gonna be one of the BMSs. We'll also offer support brackets for other JBD based BMSs that are 8S. But this seems to be quite popular. Our sales indicate, aside from our own SFK BMS, this is the second most popular one. So since it's capable for 8S, we're going to target 8S on this particular kit and build it accordingly. All right, so it's a little different building this one than the uh, previous, uh, you know, uh, 4S big 300, 280, 300 amp hour battery. So for this one, you can actually prepare your cells before you insert it into, uh, into the kit. So what you'd want to do is orient your cells very similar to the way we orient the 304 cells you want to have your final negative here and your final negative up i mean your final positive here and this just sort of orient them this way now if we put some parchment paper between them just to add additional layer insulation really not needed but if it makes you feel comfortable you can go ahead and do that once you've set that up we went ahead and wrapped the entire sort of structure around with kapton tape that's actually enough to keep these cells pretty much as acting as if one, as if they were one large sort of continuous brick so put some uh two layer, uh one or two bands of kapton tape that is going to sort of increase the um you know rigidity of it and then basically um you know you'll take the lid off and just like the uh 4s kit you'll take the brackets off and that and then you'll take this bracket on this is a special bracket it is designed for the 8S. As you can see, it's a double layer bracket, very heavy duty, overkill for this, but that's what we like. Uh, should keep the cells in place. And now let's sort of see what we have going on in the actual case. You'll notice we have two white foams on the side and then two black foams on the, uh, on the, uh, on the alternating sides. And that's because this, this foam is about three quarter inches and this is this foam is about 20 millimeters so it's going to provide us the the sort of compression and secure uh placement that we want for our cells so next we're just basically going to pick this up and insert it right in there and it's going to be a nice snug fit so we'll go ahead and put it in there and then start bolting down our uh, battery terminals and bus bars for this setup all right so <clears throat> after we have the cells inserted you'll see that there's a nice tight fit. Um, there's a little bit of gap, and the reason you see that gap is in our final production, we'll actually have a shim that will go down in there to sort of uh, close up that. But we are eventually also gonna offer a heating version of this, so that is actually intentional. You'll notice, also notice our case is actually tapered, meaning it is shorter width-wise in the bottom than it is at top. So that's why it may appear as if it's, it's loose, but this is as tight as our three, our four cell kits. It's not gonna come, get loose. And by the time we put the top plate uh, on, it's gonna be absolutely secu um, secure. But like I said, um, our production version will actually include some side shims that you can put in here to get a perfectly sized mount. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this plate on. Now, this is a double-decker plate, super strong, and as you can see, it's got two uh, separate layers that have been sandwiched together, extremely rigid, so we're going to go ahead and install this and, and secure this, and once that's done, 
we'll begin installing the bus bars and BMS balancing wires. All right, with our top plate installed, these cells are in there. They are not moving or budging at all. And actually the compression of the plate will actually compress the foam further so that now you have it fully enclosed. So one of the cool things about the um, ADS version is now you have insulation on here, 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 here. This will be super insulated. That may be a good or bad thing depending on what temperature you're normally in. But that is how it is uh, set up, full uh, perimeter based insulation. All right, now that we have in there, you need to take some isopropyl alcohol and clean all these terminals up. We want these squeaky clean. Same thing for your bus bars and same thing for your terminals. Now we have prepared the JK BMS harness. Uh, we're not really going to instructions on how to do that. That's something you do need to contact JK about and how to set that up. But essentially we're going to be installing the BMS wires and the balancing bus bars on these terminals. And that's going to prepare us for the next step, which is going to be installing the riser plate and then essentially putting the BMS plate on. And, you know, for the most part, the, after this part, it's assembling, uh, the assembly is exactly the same as it is on our four cell battery setups. All right. So we'll just move right along. All right. So we have our BMS and our uh, wires set up and we use a little bit of cable management to sort of keep the ties in place. So we're going to want the BMS wires to sort of route to the right side of the battery or towards the negative post. And then we're going to start putting a riser on. Um, some things, if you're using JK BMS, just understand wire 9 and 10 are in the same spot and wire that. And again, uh, for EVE cells, black is actually red and white is, uh, um, black is actually, I'm sorry, black is actually positive and white is negative. I, I know it's crazy, but I think they're going with AC and normally your black is your hot and your white is your uh, neutral wire. But even though this is DC, they should be black and red for whatever reason. That's how they do it. Also, a couple of note for these posts, you need some washers. So if you have hardware, make sure you put extra washers in there because that's the only way you're going to do that. If you don't, you will bottom out and hit the cell. And that's probably not a good idea. Anyway, for the most part, this is set. We're now going to put our riser plate. Since the JK already has uh, balancing, you don't really need a balancer, so this can be a little easier. Um, one thing to note, make sure you get a voltmeter and check your cells. They should basically, from final negative to final positive, should be around 26 volts. And then subsequently from the negative to positive, it should go 3.3, 6.6, 9.9, so on and so forth. So be sure to check that before going forward, because if you don't, you will not only... Well, you'll fry your entire BMS, uh, so it's not going to be a good idea, a good DE. So make sure you check it, make sure everything is good. Once it's good, install the riser plate, and then we'll move on going forward. We got our riser plate mounted. Man, I have to admit, JK uh, installed this pretty neat. Might need to contact them and see if we can start carrying their uh, BMSs. Of course, we're going to put our own app on it, but uh, I have to say, I do like how this is uh, turning out. Super clean. Anyway, next one is we're going to put on our BMS plate. And yeah, that is basically going to, for the most part, finish up this install. So, and uh, really nice long uh, terminals with the JK. So you can really place these anywhere. But uh, let's, let's uh, sort of get this mounted. Or you can actually even uh install these before so if you want to put it on like one cell here and another terminal here i guess you can go ahead and do that and then we'll just basically install this bms plate and we'll uh, start wrapping up the install all right now on to the wiring we've got our plate mounted we use a little bit of a wire it keeps to kind of do a little bit of cable management temporarily have our uh, bms balancing cable over there but now we actually need to loosen these bolts up Put, uh, put our wires on, including this, wire it up, and then basically get it prepped so that uh, we can wire it. Now, here's something we're doing our preference. You don't have to do it this way. You're free to do it whichever way that you please. But we're only going to be running single wire because even though this is a 200 amp rated BMS, we're never going to exceed 100 amps. In fact, that's what we're going to put as the amp cutoff. And it's because this is 24 volt battery, 100 amps is 1C on these batteries, and while the LF3 105s are capable of 2 to 3C, in our experience, generally you want to keep any prismatic cell 
around 0.5C or less. So we're down rating this, and because we're down rating this, we don't need to run double wire, but you can. You can actually run two into one, whichever way you prefer. The kit will include provisions to run double wire if you prefer, but since we're not ever going to be seeing, you know, more than 50 amps in our particular application, we're just going to run some, um, some single wire, and we've sized it, so we'll install it, show you how we have it set up, and then basically sort of go what we need to do to, you know, sort of finish up the install. But like I said, you will loosen up these bolts, install them, and then you won't need those extra washers, but once done, you'll have a nice, uh, you know, setup, and these wires will be installed correctly. All right. All right, so we have our wires in place. We've got the red wire here, uh, black final positive, uh, po negative wire here, uh, BMS wires uh, lined up. There's actually enough space in here so you can kind of just kind of shove it in there. It's not going to hurt the silicone. And notice we've got a slight angle tilt above, and that's perfectly okay. You can certainly do that to assist. It's not going to hurt it. So we've got a slight tilt up, and we might revise this a little bit to where have a, have a bit of a relief, but this works. Um, we might even actually include 90 degree uh, lugs, you know, uh, or if you're building it, maybe consider 90 degree lugs, but I think this is fine. This is your uh, wire going to your BMS, and then uh, this is your power negative, which is going to be your final terminal. So then, again, this is not connected, don't connect it to the very end. So we're going to mount the lid, and this can be very easy because we only got one. So we're going to mount the lid and get it going, and then, yeah, basically... Fire up this uh, JK BMS and see what's all what it's all about. All right, all right, we've got the lid installed, and man, that is easy peasy. Looks like everything is good. We're gonna plug the uh, balance port in, activate the JK BMS, and yeah, we'll try it out. We'll charge it up and sort of see what we get. But that's gonna be for sort of the next video. Uh, I'm basically just gonna uh, install this, set this up, let you look how it uh, buttons up. And that's going to be a wrap for the 24 volt LF105 kit with the JK 4 to 8S BMS. So almost wrapped up, and uh, we're just going to basically show you how it looks like all put together. All right. One thing before we forget um, if you are using the JK BMS, just because you plug it in does not mean it turns on. You have to apply a voltage across these two terminals, like a 12 volt bridge to turn it on or you have to have one of the switches since we don't have the switch get your little battery like a 12 volt battery or something and just temporarily touch the negative and the positive and bridge this connection and as soon as you see a voltage traveling through it's going to turn on you don't need to hold it on there for long just enough so just for this bms that's one thing to do i know some people are going to plug it in hey, it's not working you need to apply a voltage. You cannot short it. It has to have an actual current flowing or some sort of voltage flowing. Five to 12 volts works just fine. All right. All right, and we are pretty much done. Uh, we went ahead and installed white handles on this one so we know which one is a 24. Uh, tested this and then it is putting out power correctly. All you gotta do now is download the JK BMS app for your particular device. I believe it only works on phones. I don't know if they have an Android version or not uh, for tablets, maybe, maybe not. So download that, try it out, and that's gonna sort of conclude our 24 volt LF 105 uh, SFK uh, kit version four for the 24 volt batteries, as well as the JK 200 amp uh, 4 to 8 S BMS. All right, so it'll be available on our website. They should have a link on the bottom. If you don't see it now, it should be up in a day or two. But wanted to get this video out to you, uh, let you know we are working on multiple voltages. There will also be a 150 amp hour version of this kit using REPT 150. That is actually going to be our official. We're actually going to have a pre built version of that as well. But uh, that's a, at least a month or so um, away. But for now, for people wanting to build a 24-volt battery, you can. I understand you can also configure this as a 200-amp, 12-volt battery as well. But at that point, yeah, might as well just get the LF304s or the 280Ks and just make a nice, big 12-volt uh, uh, battery. But uh, this is worked great if you need a higher voltage in a small, compact area. All right. 
Well, thank you very much. And again, thanks for choosing Sun Fun Kids.